Another month, another remaster, remake, reboot, or plain old re-release drops into our gaming laps. The popular originals, rightly so, launched back when LucasArts... Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time still existed on the OG Xbox, the PC and the all-conquering PlayStation 2. They remain standouts from that time when games consistently push visuals and technology with bigger conflicts, such as the Conquest mode in the second release. This classic collection takes the 2004 original and the 2005 sequel, complete with single-player, split-screen and multiplayer, along with some own goals, into a single package across a wider audience. PS4, PS5 and Nintendo players get entry for the first time on Switch, and classic collections are nearly as old as games themselves, from Tato's Space Invaders, Namco's Pac-Man, and into the modern era such as the God of War series and Metal Gear Solid, and more have extended the life to newer formats. Here Aspire have once again secured the rights for the games and ported the PC versions, by the looks of things, across all formats. And just to set expectations, these are the tried and true conversions of old. Few bells and whistles over the nigh on 20 year old originals. I don't know. I have a bad feeling about this. From a content perspective, it starts well. Including the online modes was a must, but not always a given. As we saw with the Nathan Drake collection dropping the popular modes from its pack a couple of years ago. However, this was the first and biggest problem the team had at launch, with Aspire having to issue a statement apologising for the problems at launch and increase the infrastructure to support demands, with some needed dedicated servers. Now one issue I have noticed from my time, the multiplayer is still locked to platforms and it does not include cross-platform play. This first own goal and self-destructive I feel as the user base on Switch, PS4 and PS5 are likely to be far higher as the originals can still be played for far less on PC and Xbox consoles via backwards compatibility. Browsing the server list a few weeks after launch, we can already see lower player base on Xbox consoles to PS5. Performance is positive across all formats and they target 60fps, including the Switch, which they hit the mark across all my tests on PS5, Series X and Series S. However, this is bittersweet as 60fps is hardly a selling point for such old games and 120fps should have been the aim here which would benefit these multiplayer focused titles. I suspect the reason is due to the originals being capped at 60 FPS even on PC due to the tick rate in the online modes, but the single player could have easily hit 120 FPS, something the source version already offered, setting the game to 120 FPS output and variable refresh rate on the Series X, the Series S or PS5 was still locked to that 60 FPS ceiling. Even the Steam Deck can run the originals maxed out at 1620p levels with 2 times MSAA coverage at a 60fps target. Or choose 1080p at 120fps, and my MSI RTX 50 laptop can achieve 4K 120 or even 1440p into the 300fps range. This is the big omission I feel. Do or do not. There is no try. Now visuals are disappointing for those expecting any meaningful updates here. As per HD remasters of old, these are nothing more than the PC version running at higher resolutions and maximum settings with some increased textures to 4K likely from an AI upsample. Now the film clips are now improved to HD standards at least. For Battlefield 1, these look recaptured and reformatted, but in Battlefield 2, many menu sections look like a phone filter gone wrong. It highlights the split market for these, as old console players can get a big increase with higher frame rates, effects and resolution. And these are better than those PS2 and Xbox originals, as you can see now just not by a huge margin. And some things are actually worse, such as the two-player local co-op limit versus the four-player of the Xbox originals. Compounding this is image quality in the two-player mode. Post effects present on the top screen are missing on the bottom, making it look as if the top screen is actually running at a lower resolution. It doesn't. It remains the same 60fps and resolution settings as that single-player screen mode. 
on PS5 and Series X. The games are native 4K and on Series S they run the games at native 1440p. Now as I often say, resolution is not as important as many will have you believe. You see, of the two big consoles, the PS5 has far more issues. Texture filtering is around 4x and not the 16 times the Series X and even Series S have which stands out as you play with soupy textures everywhere due to the reliance the game has on them for details. Making matters worse, some objects, textures and even level of detail can be lower than the old PC's best, which is astounding. Even after all the latest patches have been applied, these issues are present and need to be resolved. As such, the PS5 version falls behind the Series X and even the Series S in this aspect and most scathingly of all, it can fall below the old PC version when maxed out at 4K. Taking the original PC versions as the baseline from the 2004 versions pitted against the Series X here, we can see near identical texture quality, filtering, pop-in and 2D backdrops in both single and multiplayer modes. And in fact, the original Xbox has better pop-in as it gradually fades in the grass, albeit nearer to the screen, which stands out in the old PC and new versions as they just pop in jarringly right in front of you. Now all DLC is included, as is the norm, but nothing has been improved aside from a few key textures and even then, some are worse. No new modes, no improved sound, no use of the dual sense, or even basics such as 120 FPS modes. Now rather than waste time here, expect the original PC level of quality across all consoles with slightly sharper textures at 4K and the same for Series S just at 1440p. Headroom aplenty here, I feel. Now, as these games are a relic of the as then emerging gaming world during that generation of consoles and PC, the lacking visuals can be forgiven. They are a note to the past and would have been perfect had this mode been left in to choose between, accompanied by an updated mode that improves models, textures, effects and more, but sadly this was not the case. One area they should have spent more time on was adding in more control options for modern machines and controllers. Flying ships or vehicles can be cumbersome as inverted controls are standard. Battlefield 1 has no run button and the controls are clunky. As such, you have to reprogram your muscle memory to compensate for these changes. Now that aside, the single player and also multiplayer remain fun, with some chaotic, comical and best of all, fun games still to be had. Mixing up bots with human enemies helps fill the recreation of the movie's big moments and the hero powers meant that if you did well you could strut around the battlefield as Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, Mace Windu, Etel. Now these ports captured that same feel as much as a retro emulator would on a modern PC or even playing the original PC or Xbox versions now more so on the PC as that is what they are and little more. The main problem, a far too common issue over the past few years, is that this collection does not honour those first games in any meaningful way. Missing out on increases or in select aspects can be worse, specifically in the PS5 port. Worst of all, playing the PC original side by side with the current generation consoles, you would be hard pressed to tell them apart. Well, aside the PS5 version that is. Now objects can appear and disappear as you play, many characters and vehicles update logic every second or third frame and this can be obvious at times. Multiplayer can glitch out on PS5 with the camera flipping around erratically after death in online matches and AI is still horrendous with it often having little will to remain alive or even remotely aware of its surroundings. All the remnants of the old source code port this is bleed through with updates being very minor. The film clips are now much higher quality, looking less like a VHS bootleg from back in the day, but in the game briefings or summary videos look like they've been ripped from a satin video CD quality. At the very least, these should have been upsampled or had the testers, if indeed this collection had any, play the same sections and reuse the new captured footage over the old audio. Menus are slow and cumbersome, having to quit each game's back into the main launcher makes switching games more effort than it should be. Loading is very slow for such a small game and the fact that both PC originals 
only occupies seven gigabytes and this collection is eight times larger at 57 gigabytes whilst looking practically identical is madness and that's mostly from those improved video clips. It can crash out to desktop, at least on Series S twice, with split screen being a problem, and then I had to disconnect all controllers before I could get it back into the main menu, with the on-screen prompts here showing the code base underneath. Ultimately, it feels, plays, and looks as old as the original games, and the entire package does not feel polished or created with passion. <laughs> In the current world, we have many options to play older games, and for a collection, specifically one so loved by fans, it misses the mark by a country mile, mostly on one of the biggest platforms in the PS5. Issues and texture filtering do suggest a possible higher level API port used here to ease that DirectX 9 based engine underneath, but whatever the cause, it reinforces the lack of attention these ports received. If you only had the Xbox or PS2 originals, then this collection makes much more sense. It looks much better, runs much smoother, and offers an increase over those 20 year old originals, as expensive as it may be. But it allows you to play the game simply, whilst looking close to your mind's eye memory of them. But for PC players, and even Xbox players through backwards compatibility, the choice is harder. And I believe these are not good value over simply picking up the originals and enjoying the nostalgia for less money and install and space and time. In the end, Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection is bigger, badder and boogier than the originals and not in a good way for more money. It can feel worse in many areas and that feels like a trap fit for the Sith themselves. It's a trap! And that's it for retro, modern and all things video game related. If you like what we do here on IGN, then keep it IGN and we'll catch you on the next one.